Hello, hello. Hi, Tima. Okay, so hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this special Wise I Should Talk episode. Today, I'm very excited to be doing this panel discussion with these amazing people who have, you know, volunteered their, their insightful thoughts, their amazing minds, their voices um, to come and talk about something that's very important today. Because I think all of us, all of us on this planet have experienced this in some kind of capacity. And this kind of relationship is very special and unique. And it's called friendships. What are friendships? How do we define them? What are the different things that come about? And also, how, do, how does culture, race, um, finances, how do all of these things impact the way we relate to others, especially when we're talking about within a, a friendship relationship? Okay, <laughs> so let's go to the next question. Taking into context everything that has been and is currently happening to Black people all over the world, but especially within the United States of America, would you say that it is possible for different races to maintain sustainable friendships? And a follow-up to that is, should we expect our non-Black friends to be pro-Black? Yes. Who would like to start? I can start. Go ahead, Lumu. Oh, um, okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can start. I think when you take into account the current situation, and the tension, you know, the racial tension the U.S. has been living for over the past hundreds of years, I think you can, we can still definitely be friends with, you know, people of other races, as long as they understand what black people are going through, they have empathy and they are willing to speak out. Like a couple of weeks ago, right after what, right after the video of George, um, or George Floyd went viral, I went on Instagram and I posted, I was like, after a certain point, if you don't speak out on this, you've like, if you chose silence, you've chosen a side. So I was really proud to see that my closest friends, my white, Asian, Arab friends, spoke out on it. And the people who didn't speak out on it, who were still po like posting pictures of, you know, teas and like lunches, I gave them the side eye. But I know that my real friends, when, when you are in a situation where black people are literally being murdered and one of your friends, one of your so-called friends is black and is at that risk, you should be you should feel something. You should, even you, your, your, your humanity is called into question. So for me, even during this time, we can still be friends as long as, as that person is willing to speak out on it, is, is willing to check up on you, is willing to, to use his privilege, if he's wise, and to speak out on something, to get other people informed. So yeah, that's my answer. Does anybody else want to add something to this particular topic? To me, um, I mean, I don't really, can you repeat the question again? Okay, so let me repeat it. With the context of everything we already know, um, with what's going on with black people, um, would you say that it's possible for different races to maintain sustainable friendships? And then a follow-up is, should we expect our non-Black friends to be pro-Black when, when it's current times in these kind of contexts? I don't know. If I, I don't think, like, I don't think just because you're, you're a different race from someone that you cannot be friends with them. And to me, to, to be pro-Black is to be literally pro-life in a sense because you cannot... You cannot change your race. So why should your race define how you're treated in society? It's like, it's like basically saying to me, like all lives don't matter until black lives matter. To me, that's what pro-black means. Mm -hmm. Just because you're pro-black, it doesn't mean you're anti-white or you're anti-Asian. You're just pro-black. Like you want black people to be treated the same way as other people you know so like you don't you don't want the, you don't want someone's race to be the factor on how they're treated but would you would you expect your friends that are non-black to build to be pro-black then based on how you defined it could you be if, friends with somebody who's not black 
who who's not pro, who's not black and is also not pro black. No. Okay. No. I mean, I I just I just no. Aisha, what is what is pro black? Like, what is the pro black you're talking about? Well, well, I mean, Tima defined her own pro black, um, and I think everyone has their own understanding of it. But for me, pro black is. Um, Anybody who's basically standing for justice and standing for the progression of black people, for them to gain equality, for them to be seen as human beings, and for their lives to be valued within the world, within our, within our culture, within everything, our societies. So I think any, a pro-black person doesn't need to be a black person, but the pro-black the pro movement has to be led by black people. So if you're going to be in that space, you have to value black voices, value black voices and lives, um, and also kind of make sure that you're pushing to progress the movement towards that. So that's what I would define it as, uh, define pro-black as, but everyone has their own, you know, things. There's political agenda, there's an economic agenda, there's, you know, in terms of social and media agenda, in terms of how that could be expressed. But that's how I would define it, you know, somebody who's really for our lives mattering. Um, and so I'm wondering if anyone had these experiences recently, because a lot of people were talking about, I'm going to take you off my Instagram if you're not over here posting certain things that show me. I, I don't, if, okay, if a person don't regularly post anything, yeah, I wouldn't expect them to post during this time, you know, because that's just consistent. But I feel like mm -hmm. if, if you're always vocal on these like political issues, economic issues and stuff like that then i would i would also expect you to be vocal around this time but if you're not generally a vocal person on social media i wouldn't expect that from you that's mm. how i see it i think it's okay for anybody that is vocal or non-vocal uh not necessarily they like I, if somebody that's vocally or super like a poster like you posted a lot on ig on on social media or whatever and if they don't post about black lives matter i don't think that should be an issue because to me that it's not a sign of somebody um that is not advocating because we don't know what they do you know what what social media just shows you is like a certain thing that you, that person wants you to see you don't necessarily know what exactly that individual is doing so you probably might be also moving too fast without actually allowing or knowing what that person is doing and just by creating, you know, oh, I'm not going to talk to that person because of this and this and that. They but could, but they if could. this is your friend, I'm not talking about regular people. I'm talking about your friends yes. that you kick it with, that you go out with, that y'all play sports together, that are not black, and they're cool with you. Y'all be kiki and they love black culture. Y'all be hanging out. They be rapping all the songs. They know all the new um, little ooze or little vert or whatever their names are. They know all the verses. Um, I'm talking about those people that you frequent a lot. Do you, should you expect those people to be pro-black in this kind of context? Or do you think they have a right to stay silent still? No, I mean, I expect them to be pro-black, of course. Uh, but when it comes to, like, are they actually verbally or... Like, they're already showing it on the Instagram or they're showing it here, they're showing that. It's not necessarily, like, a criteria that I need to look for. Because, you know, whenever I'm having conversations with them or I'm being around them, um, is what their words and their action is actually what shows me if they're actually authentic about being pro-black or not. Um, so, I, I don't... We, we are valuing social media too much in this, uh, like, understanding if somebody's actually for it or against it. So I think we should just uh, walk, I don't, mm. walk in like a, in a cautiously when it comes to like understanding of your friends um, or people that you know that are mm -hmm. either pro or not if they're not using the social media like that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm. I mean, this is like I've, like, I've been debating this in my head. But I mean, like I said before, if if you're the if you're an active person on social media and you always like may you may not always but you talk about political stuff and like economic stuff 
and then there is something literally happening and you're you're vocal about you're vocal about other issues but this issue you're not vocal about it i i will give you the side eye but it doesn't mean you're not doing something behind the scenes yeah but but i also feel like i don't think I think especially with the whole coronavirus thing, you know, we were all in quarantine. Not everybody could go outside. So I think social media has become a huge part in, like, how we communicate. Think about the whole Blackout Tuesday situation that happened. Like, millions of people who may not have been able to march outside were able to kind of, protest virtually so i don't think we should exclude social media but i also think real life is also important but i think I don't okay. know. it's really interesting okay. because i posed the question and i didn't ask about social media i used the social media as an example but it, it's it's really interesting because in the responses social media came up because like what timo pointed out is currently social media has become life for a lot of us because we are not really most of us um, the majority of us don't feel comfortable socializing in real life so it's really interesting how social media is now standing in for real life quote unquote and how we get to see what people are thinking about what people are watching what people are interested in but i'm i'm just asking in general because this behind the scenes question or behind the scenes concept i don't really believe in it I personally don't. Unless you're somebody who makes a film or you do productions in terms of documentaries, I don't believe there's such a thing as behind the scenes. If you're my friend and you're pro-black, I sh it, that's not going to be behind the scenes. I'm going to know you're pro-black because you're going to be hitting me up or I'm going to be hearing through our other friends what it is that you're doing. Like, either it's going to be, on, it's not going to be on social media always, but if you're my friend, I'm going to know you're pro-black. I don't need you to post it online because I'll see it. I don't believe in behind the scenes for friends. That's how I feel in terms of like them showing, but I don't know, maybe y'all got some True. I mean, uh, some also like, you know, some other people like they can be your friends too and they don't, they're not necessarily understanding the intricacies of what's going on. You know what I mean? So it's not like they don't understand the history of the, or what's, go, what's the behind dynamics of why certain group is going through certain things. You know, yeah. it's just like they might not know. But would you feel uh, but yeah, comfortable just, hanging out with them after this? Like, if they didn't say anything, there is no behind the scenes. They just never said anything. Would you feel comfortable going back out and hanging out? If, if they're my friends, I know they're pro black. And uh, yes, you can be friends with some uh, people from other races. Okay. <laughs> I just don't understand, like, what else is out there for people to learn about? We all see in the same footage. We all see in the same thing over and over and people still feel like they should be educated or like they should understand 400 years of something. You don't have to go through that. Like, I feel like this is like, what else do you need people to say? It's not a dissertation. It's not a philosophical question. This is a gun pointed at people that are unarmed and people being killed and people have that do those things are just running around free doing the same thing over and over i don't think it's a it's a it's a hard topic to look at and to be honest like the same people that are not feeling compassion for what's happening today are the same people that won't feel compassion for what will happen to any other country whether it's in afghanistan whether it's in whatever where people are dying because of some war that they have nothing to do with those people are the same people that don't care about that mm -hmm. and that's just facts and we can't say we can't sit down and say oh non-blacks or no these people are among the, all of these races some of them are black too when you hear them talk it hurts more because yeah like dude you should really like you there's no reason for you not to understand this it hurts more, but they're there too. At the Black Lives Matter protest, you would see that one person going around, oh, what are you guys doing? What are you get? It's like they are they're among everyone, but they're predominantly among you know non-black people because black people know it the most. Because even some people that feel like, oh yeah, 
let's not let's not do this let's not do that when it happened to someone closer to them they're like oh shit yeah i'm not i'm not advocating for 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 you know peaceful stay home all of that let's go and protest because it's happening people closer to them and I, I, hey like this is it like social media has become like the new the new trend is trending to be honest like like robel said let's not you know go quickly on it and all of that but at this moment this is the only power that the people really possess the media has shown over and over over years that they can manipulate the information whatever way they want they can choke information they can choke the reality show it in another way and get people to come down the way politicians want social media has been the only platform recently that people were able to get on and accomplish something substantial and if you've noticed it's because of social media that people during blackout tuesday people that were putting hashtag black lives matter quickly people were able to say no no take that out put hashtag blackout tuesday so that we don't uh, uh uh be counterproductive to our own movement so people can see what's happening instead of seeing black screens everywhere when they type uh, blm you, did you see how quick that happened i don't know if i'm the only one realizing the book it was so quick and i was fascinated i was like whoa look at this this is this is simple people posting like yo change your your hashtag quickly people doing this we don't need the media the media needs us now now they're running around trying to infiltrate into social media so that they can have more control over the situation but they couldn't before if it was our parents era they were like oh let's all meet uh down there la cienega and rodeo where are they going to pass that information cnn no but today all robert has to do is say oh everybody hit me up we are here la brea and crenshaw everybody bang everybody's there so it's like we have to use it although we have to be conscious we also have to realize this is the only way for us to really communicate and organize right now i think i think you're right and for me what i'm hearing from everybody i agree with most of most what uh, everyone has said um for me my biggest concern and the reason why i posed this question was because i was scared of having that moment in real life where my life was going to be in danger and i was with that friend that i didn't take time to actually like have a real conversation with about race and then find out that they're like oh i got to go this got nothing to do with me cuz this is the thing people prioritize what they need to prioritize when it's life and death and unfortunately for a lot of people of color for black people most of the time when there's trouble it is life or death and my question is i don't want to be rolling with the wrong people and then they're not going to have my back when it comes to a life and death situation i'm a black woman in america if something happens i'm a black woman in france too simultaneously if something happens and or the police stops me or somebody is doing something to me or aggressing me in a certain way if i turn around and the people i was with are just like well i got to go this ain't nothing to do with me i'll be like wow like i'll be i'll be more disappointed in myself that i haven't been able to look at my circle and really make sure that who's around me values my life and is able to identify Oh my black friend actually needs me to root for her in this in this particular moment. So that's why I brought the question to the table. It's not oh sorry, it's not to create any kind of like tension or to split up people and races. I do think that even within the black community there are some differences, but it's just an observation that I made during this whole, you know, BLM protests and the George Floyd movement, Breonna Taylor movement. It's just like you have to be mindful of the people you keep around you. Cuz they may not value your life like you think they do. That's what I want to say about that. All right. So let's go into a fun truth or false. So whatever I say, um everyone could just say true or false and then if you actually have something really passionate to say about that, why you chose that answer, you let me know and then we can hear it. So, true or false category. Your friends are a reflection of yourself. True. Oh. True, like somewhat. True. Yeah. True. Oh. Eva Somewhat. Huh. False. Oh. Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this latest Wise Aisha Talks friendship panel series. I really appreciate all of the love and support that I've been receiving from all of you. 
Thank you so much. And I want to remind you all to make sure you go subscribe to my YouTube. And if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you. Make sure to subscribe, like the video and comment. And please let me know what you're thinking about this topic in particular. It was a really interesting conversation. And I really appreciate all of the amazing panelists that joined me. Now for the next rounds of episodes, we're going to get into more interesting conversations about gender, about um, friendships in general. But in this time around, we're going to be doing truth or false um, so I hope that you guys enjoy the next episodes that are going to be coming up this next week. They're going to be fun and lighthearted. And yeah, I'll see you around. Toodles. Boom, boom, boom.